Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave and in a recent video, this one right here, I covered a lot of the ETFs that I've been buying in my 50s, but I have been an investor for a mighty long time at this point, so I've accumulated quite a bit. So it's important for me to consolidate all this information in one report every so often and see if my direction is right. So I did that recently and I thought I would share it with you. If that is what you're looking for, please stick around. Whoop. So if you're like me, which isn't necessarily a good thing, you've accumulated several accounts over time. They could be retirement accounts or after tax accounts, but all this information needs to be brought together, summarized at some point so you can have a cohesive idea, cohesive game plan on where we want to invest our money. So I did that recently and I thought I'd give you my top holdings. I do have many more outside of my top holdings because I tend to dibble dabble. That's my word for reviewing ETFs on YouTube and then buying a couple shares. It's hard to resist sometimes. So some of these are very small. I'll leave those out. You'll see my main holdings as far as uh, what I've been buying, what I've accumulated over time as far as individual stocks, ETFs, and bonds. It's also important to understand that my portfolio should not reflect upon what you should be doing. Everybody's situation is going to be different. This is what works well for me and what I'm trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish could be completely different. And please feel free to comment down below on which one of these you think is my dumbest position within my top 20. I know you have some strong opinions and I've put on my big boy pants so I can handle it. So feel free, but no bad language because that's lowbrow and we are very highbrow. So I want creative insults, please. Creative. So no offense, but you are a stupid asshole. Without further ado, let's go with number 20, which is JPM. JP Morgan. It's a bank. You've heard of them. 1.08% of my portfolio is in JP Morgan. And you'll find about 10 of these out of these top 20 are individual stocks and then a mix of ETFs and some bonds. Number 19, Costco, Consumer Staples, 1.19, let's call it 1.2% in Costco. Now, I love to go there and get my steak. They've got a great meat section, so I buy the stock. I also buy like the $4 chicken, the whole chicken. Good place to go. And I always go there. If I always go there, then I buy the stock. Same with number 18, Walmart. Great place to go after midnight. Enjoy the scenery. Take some videos. Make some money on YouTube by posting those videos. It's Walmart at 1.31%. Very simple, very straightforward, right? Now, number 17 is something I'm sure I will hear about. It's Pfizer, PFE, Pfizer. Healthcare, about 1.46%. And uh, I didn't really own a whole lot of this until recently. A lot of stock got put to me, but I'm happy at its current position and price. So I'm not too far out of position, but I have lost some money on Pfizer so far. It's been on a big, steep decline. Easy, low-hanging fruit to hit me up on Pfizer down in the comments section. And number 16, Duke Utilities. Boring. Boring stocks, right? A lot of these are boring stocks, but uh, they've served me well over time. Uh, utilities, 1.5% of my portfolio is straight up Duke Energy. Number 15 is the first ETF on my list. This is VO. This is a mid cap blend. I only go down to mid cap. I don't do that small cap stuff. I do mid cap apparently because that's 1.5% of my portfolio. It's actually performed pretty well. I've had this for a while. Number 14 is Dow, D-O-W. This is the chemical company, Dow. It's 1.76% of my portfolio. I've owned these shares for a long time. It hasn't really gone anywhere, but I've sold a lot of calls against this position. It pays a nice dividend. Uh, so it's done pretty well in my portfolio. Number 13 is PG Procter & Gamble. I've owned this for probably 20 plus years. It's 2% of my portfolio. It's done quite well over time. Number 12, VGT, the ever so popular technology ETF from Vanguard, 2.16%. And uh, I've been buying this, but it's also performed very well. So it's creeping up there. It's climbing up the charts in my portfolio because of performance. Number 11 is VOO, the ever so popular S&P 500 ETF from Vanguard, 2.57% of my portfolio. And number 10 is XLV, something I bought a lot of in 2023. This is healthcare, healthcare sector ETF, and that's currently 2.8% of my portfolio. Number nine is SCHD. This is an ETF that we've discussed quite a bit in the past. I like this one. I've been adding to that position over the last couple of years, 3.09%. Number eight is Apple, AAPL, 3.12%. We know all about this one. I did sell quite a few shares at the beginning of the year, which was, turns out so far, a pretty good decision. 
But between that 3.12% and all these ETFs, I probably have 5% Apple within my portfolio. Apple is everywhere. You can't get away from it, and you probably don't want to. It's been a very good performer over the years. And I imagine it will continue to perform well. I'm just taking a little bit of a break from it. Number seven is Goog or Alphabet, G-O-O-G, 3.87%. This was my largest individual stock holding for a while, but it isn't anymore. It's number two. Uh, number six is a little bit misleading. It's FBTC. So this is the uh, Fidelity Bitcoin ETF that you can buy, and it's 3.89%. But a lot of that is already Bitcoin and Ethereum that I owned previously. I wanted to lump it together, though, so you can kind of see where it sits. And I wanted to see it personally for my portfolio and where it sits. Number five is our first income ETF. This is JEPQ at 3.95%. I've been adding to this position and one other one that we're going to see here in a minute. But I like this fund quite a bit. It's been performing really well, and I'm, uh, I've been adding to this position recently. Number four for me is Microsoft. This is my single largest individual stock holding now at 4.34%. It's been fighting its way up the charts and it's finally there at number one. I've owned it forever. I've never sold a share and it's made its way to the very top. It's been a great performing stock as I'm sure you know. Number three is JEPI. This kind of surprised me, but I have been buying it and adding to it. And I do have some in retirement accounts. I've had some in after-tax accounts. This makes up 5.17% of my portfolio. It's about as much as I want to hold. So between JEPI and JEPQ and a couple others that I own, I'm at about 10% with these income, what I'm defining as income funds for my portfolio. Number two, I'm calling it bonds. These are individual bonds that I buy, purchase government bonds and municipal bonds, and they account for 5.67% of my portfolio. Duration is anywhere from three months out to about seven or eight years. Uh, the muni bonds are maybe a little bit longer than that. And then uh, number one, is cash. Uh, if you've been following me for a while, you know I had a lot of cash in 2023, which made me wrong like a lot of bears last year. I was a little bit bearish and I put a lot of money in, in money market accounts that were paying. Um, and I think it was all the way up to about 40%. At one point, I'm down to about 25.23%, give or take a couple of percentage points because uh, taxes are due. So I'm withholding some money back for taxes. Uh, Q1 taxes are coming due. So I've got some money set aside for that as well. But uh, that's my estimate, so it's right around there. About 25% of my portfolio is sitting in cash. And for me, I trade a lot of options, so that it'll, this allows me that buying power to, uh, to add positions if I want to, and to uh, sell puts and maybe collect a little bit of extra income along the way. By the way, before we jump into the next portion of this, I do like to mention that I am a Seeking Alpha affiliate. There are affiliate links down below. So if you're looking for a stock research tool, the one I like to use for a lot of my research is Seeking Alpha. So. Uh, Sign up down below, look for that discount. So that is my list of my top 20 individual holdings, but we can take this a step further and start grouping everything together and start looking at sector and industry allocation. So if you do, then you get this. And I can see right off the bat that international equity makes up 0.26% of my portfolio. I think in the last video I said in retirement, I'm headed towards about 20%, so I'm well off the pace at this point. But those uh, ETFs will be like VGK and uh, VXUS would be my two examples there. Next up would be consumer discretionary at 0.44%. This could be lumped in other places, but that's McDonald's and Amazon are two examples. Then industrials at 0.9. This would be XLI, the industrial sector ETF, and Caterpillar. Uh, next up, large growth at about 1%, MGK, and surprisingly, VUG uh, also fits into large growth. And we have REITs, 1.29%. Uh, my main REITs are O, LTC Properties, and Well Tower. Next up, Mid Cap Blend. This is at VO Holding at 1.52%. Then we have Energy, uh, Chevron, and Energy Transfer, my two larger holdings, largest holdings there at 1.62%. Then we have Materials. That's more industry related, but that's Dow and LYB. Uh, then we have a large blend at 2.73%. Examples will be VOO or VTI. Uh, then we have utilities. So in this case, it's Duke and XLU, the Spider Select Sector Utility ETF. And we're looking at financials at 3.74%. JPM and XLF would be my two largest holdings there. Then we have large value, which is 3.85%. Examples will be SCHD or VYM. Alternatives, that's my name for it, is uh, things like Bitcoin, FBTC, uh, GLD Gold, the Gold ETF. Makes up about 4% of my portfolio. It's not going to be any 
bigger than that, it's probably gonna hold right there. That's enough. And then we have consumer staples, 5.41%. Procter & Gamble, Pepsi. Healthcare makes up 5.78%. My largest holding is XLV followed by Pfizer. Then we have bonds. So this is bonds and bond funds. And uh, pleasantly surprised to see 9.38%. It's probably more than I expected. Uh, but a good number for me, I think, currently. Uh, just a little bit under 10%. Then income funds. A lot of the stuff that we've been talking about, JEPI, JEPQ, DIVO, and others make up 11.68%. A little bit larger than I expected. Probably holding that as it is right now. I don't need any more, I don't think, at this point. Uh, next up, largest holding uh, just about segment is uh, what I'm calling technology. We're, we're putting a lot here. We're putting information technology, communication services, and tech funds all in this basket. So making up 16.21% is Microsoft Holdings, Apple, Google, NVIDIA, Meta, uh, VGT, XLK. All these would fit into that portion of my portfolio. So that makes up a large portion of what I'm still trying to do at age 52. And then uh, again, there's that uh, in comparison, cash position sitting at 25.23%. And uh, the two ETFs uh, or uh, money markets that I've been using are VMFXX um, over at E-Trade and SPAXX is my default at Fidelity. Good. And finally, if we summarize that all together, we see that 61.37% is sitting in stocks. 34.61% is in cash and bonds, and 4.02% are in those alternatives that I'm not so sure about, but are still sitting there. So feel free to make fun and let me know where I screwed up down below. Now, if you have any questions on any of this, please ask down below. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe because I'll be doing another video soon on some ETF and I'll likely buy it, and that's gonna change my whole math problem. I'm gonna have to do this whole thing over again, and you wanna be there for that. So. Like and subscribe and have a great night. We'll see you soon. Whoop.